Business Brain, episode 494 for Casual Friday, October 20th, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain. We are, for those of you who are listening for the first time, the show where we take an idea or three each episode, we analyze it, we dissect it, we pull it apart. The goal being to train our business brains together so that we can each keep on living those charmed lives. Sponsors for this episode include fastmail.com slash business brain. That's where you go to get 10% off your first year. We'll talk more in depth about why you're going to go do that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And Lafayette, California. Happy Friday, Dave. Happy Friday. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Casual Friday. Yeah, it's casual Friday. I'm pretty casual today. What do we got going on today? Robert has a not so casual question for us. He says, it seems like every time I turn around, another client is asking for more of my services for less money. I recently doubled my prices to help combat inflation and the increasing demand for more services. It's smart. It's like everybody else's prices are going up everywhere. Might as well go up with you. Uh, He says, I figured it's always easier to drop a price if needed, but I rarely do. But how do I stave off these increasing customer expectations? What a great question. You want to start with this one? I've got some thoughts too, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, the first suggestion I would make to Robert is to kind of flip this idea on its head is that change the framework of, Hey, this is a problem. These increased expectations and, and turn it into an opportunity. Yep. Um, you know, we recently did an episode, uh, where we talked about having three different products or service tiers, you know, the whistle, which gets you lots of attention. Maybe it's priced low for some introductory thing. The, the workhorse, which is the, the daily, you know, what people just buy from you all the time and the whale, which is, man, if you really want the best of the best, you get that. And there's only a small, you know, portion of your customers that are going to want to do that. But, you know, if you have a menu for them to choose from, you can push them into like, Hey, great. We love that you want this experience or these, these are your expectations. This is the tier that you follow in. You, you're, you are going to be into our diamond tier (laughs) or whatever you want to call it. Right. And this is it. And they'll go, Oh, some of them will go, Hey, that's great. That's exactly what I want. I want, you know, instant contact. I want this, that, and the other thing. And, but most of them will go, oh, wow. Uh, you know, I, I, no, I, I can't afford that. But then you bring it back down to the workhorse and go, great. Well, here's how we operate. This is the price point. This is what you can expect. And managing those expectations before you engage, have any kind of engagement with the customer, that's the secret. So they know exactly up front what they're going to get. And and if they're demanding more for less, I would argue that that's not your customer. I, I, I agree. I mean, I never hold it against people who ask for more or ask for a lower price. Like I do deal? the yeah, same I, thing. I get it. Right? I do like, too. I understand. It's totally fine. And so I think... I, I think all of this starts with a conversation, right? I mean, it, what you yes. d- discussed here is the same thing. But when somebody asks for more, you, now you're having a conversation, right? They've asked for more or they've asked to pay less or maybe both, right? But you're fostering this idea of a partnership with your customer, not a legal partnership, right? Yes, but a figurative yes. one where you understand what they're bringing to the table, what you're bringing to the table, and you're going to work to have a an outcome that is a non-zero sum game, right? Where you are all winning. They they're paying you for your time. You're providing them value that for their business is worth more than they are paying you, and everything works. But yeah, when somebody asks me, you know, can we do this for you know, can can we get a lower price on these podcast ads? I would yeah. say, yeah, you know. I, I I appreciate you asking. I would do the same thing, right? So you've already acknowledged them. You've already moved to the same side of the table. And then I say, look, you know, we price our things. We don't price things with a built-in buffer here. We price things very fairly. 
They are matched within the industry, oftentimes even perhaps a little more aggressive than the industry, given the amount of service that you get from us. Right. So now, yep. like at the same time, I'm saying we're just like the industry, except we're better. We're different. Right. Like in one breath, I get to say both of those things. Yep. Yeah. We're matched with the industry, ex you know, except with all the service you get from us. And and then it's and, and then it's like and so therefore this is the price and you're just walking. I would do the same thing. Here's what we do. This is the price. And at that point. It's up to them whether they want to push again. Well, yeah, I understand all those things, but I still want to pay you less. OK, well, at that point, you're not in a partnership anymore. You've got someone that's looking for a zero sum game. They want to in order for them to win, you need to lose. Yes. And that's the point where they are not your customer, right? It, you know, yep. it, if they, if, if, but if they do come back and, and say, I do understand all that. Here's the reality from our standpoint. Here's why the work that we need done is only worth, you know, 1.1 X to us instead of two X to us. At that point, now you, you're actually having a conversation and there is that partnership. And I'm using air quotes here where yes. you, you say, okay, I get it. My normal service, the, even the workhorse is more than you need. So maybe we go down to the whistle, right? And, and we, we yep. just, I'll do less and you pay me what you think you're supposed to pay me, whatever that number is. Here's what I can do for that number while still leaving myself time to work with other clients. Yep. And now they get to pick. I like it. Yeah. yeah. And you can maybe perhaps there's things in, in your quote or whatever that you can eliminate yep. that, uh, are not going to impact, um, you know, the level of service or, or things. So I, I think just thinking about it as an opportunity, I would say if your customers want more particular customers want more, you should find a way to give it to them, but you need to be sure you're compensated for it. All right, look, in today's digital age, email isn't just a way to send messages. It's the backbone of our professional lives. But amid all these concerns of privacy breaches and cluttered inboxes, do you often find yourself asking, shouldn't our email work better for us? Well, that brings me to our sponsor, Fastmail. With over 20 years under their belt, Fastmail has proven to be a leader in email privacy. They're ad-free and promise no tracking, so you can trust your messages remain yours and yours alone. The convenience of having your calendar, email, and contacts all integrated into one service is unparalleled. Now, we've all had our fair share of email mishaps, right? Have you ever accidentally sent an email prematurely? Or do you find yourself drowning in a flood of subscriptions? Well, with Fastmail's features like scheduled send, snooze, and masked email, I've found my productivity skyrocketing. The masked email in particular is a game changer. No longer do I have to worry about sharing my primary email address with every new website or service. And for people in our line of work running businesses, right? The option to use our own domains to create custom email addresses, pure gold. So if you've ever faced the ordeal of a cluttered inbox or wished you had better control over your email experience, Fastmail might just be the solution you've been looking for. To learn more about Fastmail, visit fastmail.com slash businessbrain for 10% off your first year. Again, fastmail.com slash businessbrain for 10% off your first year. And then you can follow them on Facebook, X, Mastodon, and LinkedIn. And our thanks to Fastmail for sponsoring this episode. It seems like all week here, Shannon, we've been talking about Soft skills, negotiating with people, working with humans. And yep, that's right. I, I saw a Twitter thread, I don't know, in the last week or so where somebody had asked, do you believe anyone can become good at managing people? And your answer was nope. You want to <laughs> talk about that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I answered this. It's a, it's a great question. You know, can anyone become good at, at being a manager? And I, I, I said, no, because some so soft skills are, you either have them or you don't. Yeah. And so I've just seen it over time where I've, I've tried to get like technicians to move into managerial positions or, and super great people that are very skilled at certain things. So you, you want to get more out of them, but 
shifting them out of you know this their technical role or yeah. analytical role you know moving into a leadership role managerial role is an entirely different animal and i i don't you can teach some of it but if you're not uh I, I, and i i use these ter- you know a friendly optimistic a good listener you have empathy you have a good sense of humor i think you need all of those things at some level to become a good manager don't you think you can learn some of those though? I'm going to push some back a little bit on this. Yeah, some of them. But can you teach somebody to be friendly? <laughs> I, I don't think, know. I think actually that's Friendlier. the one I think you can teach. Okay, I, that's good. That's that, well, in in that I had to learn. I, I mentioned on Wednesday's episode. I, you know, social anxiety is not something that yeah. is foreign to me. I I am an introvert. Sure. I, I recharge my social batteries alone, right? Whereas the, the people who are extroverts recharge their social batteries with other people. And there's, that's fine. Right, yep. There's nothing wrong with either of those things. But I also, in addition to being an introvert, started out very shy and therefore was not seen as friendly. It wasn't that I didn't want to be friendly. It was that I did not know how to be and I wasn't outgoing and I didn't know how to do it. And I'm still not as a default. I am not outgoing, but I've learned how to act like I am. And okay. then yep. once I am then make it like, till you make it. Yeah. It's well, kind of, I mean, I, I learned, I, you know, and I learned that, okay, if I just throw myself out there, most of the time it works out, you know, and sometimes yeah. it fails miserably and whatever, and that's fine, but I can be upbeat and chipper and, and friendly but it was definitely something that I had to learn that I could do. Now, was it a skill I already had and I had to learn how to highlight it? M- maybe that's, that, that's a fair argument, right? But, but I, it was not something that was a default for me to exercise. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really valid. Um, I, I think you can, you know, teach some of these things, um, trying to think about it thinking back when i had managers that would just be so frustrated um may, maybe a lot of it is account maybe some of its accountability where you have to you have to be accountable for the problem even if you're not causing it right mm-hmm. where if you're solving issues with your staff somehow you have to own it like um okay, this is a problem. I've either, I've either hired the wrong person or I put the team together incorrectly, or there's a certain way, a certain framework of looking at it that I think allows you to dive into the problem, uh, without appointing blame or yes, just taking that accountability on yourself. I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you can teach it. I'd like, I think you certainly can teach people to become better managers, better leaders. Absolutely. But I think there's just some people that would be better off in a different role. Oh, for and, sure. Uh, I mean, you're, you're you know, sort of alluding to the Peter principle here, right? Yeah. Where part of it is. Yeah. People yeah. are, are, you know, promoted to their level of the highest level of incompetence. Right. So, yeah. Uh, because you yep. see somebody who's skilled and you think, oh, I want to promote them. And then you suddenly realize, well, I've promoted them out of the job they were good at into a job right. they're terrible at. Oh, I've done it. Yeah, same. I've I've been on both sides of it. I've done it to other people and I've had it done to me. Um, it's arguable that I'm in that position right now. You know, what 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 do I know about what do I do? I, like, yeah, so let's try to make it up. But <laughs> well, I think and, and- I think one of the skills that is difficult to perhaps impossible to teach, but certainly difficult is empathy. I think people, maybe it is teachable, but I don't I think kn- that I don't know. That's a hard one. I yeah. also think it's very difficult to teach somebody to have a sense of humor and because humor really connects people, right? If, yeah. When you can joke about the situations, when you can joke, you can joke about, about yourself, yourself. that's God, the real that, key. Know, yeah. yeah. Self-effacing humor is yeah. so powerful. Yeah. Um, and and then you can kind of bridge uh, the connect because a big just so much about leadership and managing is connecting with people, um, 
And and I certainly am not. I'm not saying I have all these skills because I've failed at it miserably many times. Same. Um, so it, it's just a good dial, a good discussion to have. And if if you can't, okay, then how do you teach empathy? How do you teach people to be friendly? That that would be the question I would ask. You know, our audience is okay. I had you know maybe there's just these things we're missing, or what are the tips? Um, to, to overcome these things that I think can't be teachable. All right. You know, I, this is at, a, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Help educate me because this business brain is a, a, it's all of us, right? Yeah. We're, we're trying to fine tune one another. So I'm going to read these uh, five things that you've identified so that everybody knows uh, what we're looking to learn. How do we train people to be friendly, optimistic, good listeners, empathic, and have a sense of humor. So let us know. Feedback at businessbrain.show. We really, really want to, like, I, this, if we can figure this out, we'll share it all back with you. Like, we're, we're learning this together. And, yep. uh, I mean, what a great way to lead a charmed life. If we can teach people these things, man, that's the key. See Amazing. Next week.